I'm about to explain the fifth largest crypto project in the world to you very, very simply. And you know, a lot of people say, I wish I knew about Bitcoin back in 2011, back in 2012. I would have been rich today. It's important to point out that Solana only launched in 2020. So just about four or five years ago, if you knew about Solana, you could have made a massive killing today. So let's dive in. What was the inception of Solana? So it all started with a brilliant fella called Anatoly Yakovenko. He was born in the Ukraine. He obtained a computer science degree from the University of Illinois. And this is actually pretty wild because typically brilliant geniuses, they drop out of college because it's a waste of time for them. But he actually went and finished with a degree. So kudos to him. What did he do after? He had a really impressive career at Qualcomm. He was actually there for over a decade. And then later on in 2017, he became a software engineer for Dropbox. And 2017 happens to be the year that he actually founded Solana. That's when he wrote the white paper. And it's a really interesting white paper to read. It's a bit complex, but a fascinating one. I highly recommend that you give it a peek just to see how brilliant Anatoly actually was. So finally, in March of 2020, the main net of Solana actually launched. It was launched by the Solana Foundation, which is based in Switzerland. You're probably wondering to yourself, how the hell did a project that dropped in March of 2020 go ahead and become the fifth largest crypto project in the world? Well, the reason is, is Solana is incredibly fast and it is a scalable blockchain. It's designed to run dApps and handle many crypto transactions. It's basically what Ethereum is, just a faster, cheaper version of it. At least that's what it was at first. The project is evolving. Now, how fast exactly is it? It can handle up to 65,000 transactions per second. This completely destroys anything that Ethereum can do at the moment and some of the other platforms as well. And the fees are also extremely low. This is a huge problem with Ethereum. The fees are very high. This is why in the last bull run and something that really helped Solana grow super, super fast is it was dubbed as the ETH killer because of the low transaction fees, because of how scalable it can be, and because of how fast it is. It's also a very developer friendly ecosystem. And it has been achieving its goals as positioning itself as a very high performance with low fees blockchain. But the problem is there are decentralization concerns, which we'll get into later. So how exactly is it so much faster than some of the other blockchains that use proof of stake? Well, this is because it uses proof of history along with proof of stake. And this significantly decreases the amount of time needed for a block to be created. This is usually a huge bottleneck when it comes to Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a lot of the other blockchain projects. Now, it has not been a smooth journey for Solana by any stretch of the imagination. There have been a lot of outages. They were also unfortunately connected a bit to FTX and Alameda Research. We'll get into that later in the video, but what I want to point out is that a lot of these hurdles, this is all seen as growing pains of an ambitious, cutting-edge blockchain platform. And so as the developer community and the ecosystem continues to grow at a rapid pace, so does the price of Sol. And we'll cover that shortly, but it does suggest confidence in Solana's long-term potential, not just by those that are backing it now, but there's a lot of adoption by developers and obviously a lot of interest by investors. There's even chatter of there being a Solana ETF in the future. So as mentioned, Solana has experienced several network outages. Some have lasted many hours, some lasted nearly a day. So if you take a look here, Cryptomaniacs does a really good job at detailing why an actual downtime occurred, was it major or partial, and the exact date that it had occurred. It's important to point out that most often this was caused by spam attacks or bot activity, especially during 
during NFT mints, and also there was a ton of software bugs and high validator load. So if we take a look here, you see a bunch from 2021, 2022. If you explore some of the latest ones, you will see that in the beginning of May of 2022, there was a major outage that lasted nearly 14 hours. That was due to NFT minting bots overflowing the network. You also see here in the beginning of October 2022, a major downtime occurred nearly eight hours and that was also due to validator malfunctions we see yet another one towards the end of february of 2023 and that lasted nearly a day and it looks like the last major outage occurred during February of 2024, it was just under five hours. And if you actually wanna read in detail why these different outages occurred, I will go ahead and link this article in the description of the video. It's also really important to point out that during network outages, the validators often had to coordinate to restart the network. And some argue that this also shows a lack of true decentralization. By the way, I've mentioned validators a few times and I wanted to go ahead and explain a common criticism of Solana and that's running a validator requires really powerful hardware. So high CPU, RAM and storage requirements, which limits decentralization as fewer people can afford to run these nodes because they can run pretty expensive. And it also makes the network more dependent on data centers or large infrastructure providers. And on that note, I want to point out that Solana.com is actually a pretty good website where you can learn a lot about the Solana crypto project. And it was created by the Solana Foundation, which is based in Switzerland. And also it's important to point out and just as a web developer myself, as a web designer, if anyone from Solana is watching this in the learn sections here, if I click on some of these, this page looks like not so good looking. This right here looks like a page that I would see in 1999. And there's a few pages on here like that. So please, if you can make it a little more visually friendly, make it a little more user friendly so that it's easy on the eyes and it actually entices people to learn and read about all the resources that they have. Not the entire website is like that. They actually do a pretty good job on certain sections of the website, but I just had to mention it. It is one of those pet peeves of mine. So let's now take a look at Solana on coin market cap. If we scroll down here, you will notice that Solana is the fifth largest project out of any cryptocurrency project by market cap. It currently sits at $104 billion in market cap. That is huge. And its current price is $217. I am taping this on January 4th of 2025. It's also important to point out that Binance Coin, BNB, is neck and neck with Solana. So if you're watching this tomorrow, you might actually even see that BNB is going to be above Solana. But there are no crypto projects currently that are close to these two's market cap. So probably Solana and Binance Coin are going to play number five and number six and just do the tango, at least in the short term. So if we take a look at the all time chart of Solana, it's actually really interesting to see it experienced such a high and such great times during November of 2021, but then it sank all the way down to like 10 bucks. I remember this time. I actually scooped some up and I sold it shortly after. I wish I held it, but I just had some life expenses and I had to sell it. But take a look at what it's doing now. It is once again reaching its all-time highs. If we take a look here, the actual true all-time high occurred on November 22nd, 2024, and the price was $263.83. The all-time low was actually May 11th, 2020, where it was just 50 cents. Imagine scooping it up at a dollar and sitting on 217x at the moment. Oh, that sounds so delicious. Now, something that I want to point out right off the bat is that the circulating supply is 482.9 million Solana, and we can actually see that the max supply is infinity. Now is a good time to really discuss the tokenomics 
of Solana. So the native token is often referred to as SOL, just the ticker symbol SOL, and that's just the native cryptocurrency behind Solana. It's used for transactions, staking, and governance. It's similar to gas fees on Ethereum, so you need SOL to pay for network operations like sending tokens or deploying smart contracts. So the initial supply was 500 million Solana, and that was created at launch. I do want to point out that the circulating supply and actually the total supply, they change because Solana has an inflationary model. So crypto.com does a good job at showing the actual inflation schedule. It's important to point out that it's starting out with an annual inflation rate of 8%, but then the rate gradually decreases by 15% each year until it stabilizes at 1.5%. And we could see that right here. And by the way, validators and delegators earn rewards on Solana for helping secure the network but the rewards actually come from the inflationary supply. Now, before you get afraid of this infinity symbol and think that Solana is gonna to go to infinity, it's important to mention that a portion of the transaction fees are actually burned. This reduces the overall supply over time. So this deflationary effect helps balance the inflation. So I mentioned over here that Solana initially had a 500 million soul supply. And so what I want to take a look here is the initial token allocation of this 500 million. So 38.9% were allocated to the community reserves for staking rewards and network development. You could see that there's a lot of funding that occurred. And during these funding rounds, like for instance, the founding round, there was 12.9% allocated. Seed was 16.2%. Then another validator round, 5.2%. Strategic round, 1.9%. Coin list auction, 1.6%. The foundation received received 10.5%. When you hear of the foundation in Solana, that's the Solana Foundation, and it is there for ecosystem growth. And then around 12.8% actually went to the team and developers. Now, because of this allocation, Solana was dubbed as the VC coin for a little while, especially because even the co-founder of Solana is a VC. There's a lot of VCs involved that's venture capitalists. But at the same time, with all of these projects, and Solana is pretty new, over time, it is going to become more and more decentralized. At least that's the hope. So I want to make this a balanced video because I've mentioned some negative aspects of Solana, but let's cover some really positive aspects. So Solana is more environmentally friendly than traditional proof of work blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum before it switched to proof of stake, obviously, but its energy consumption is significantly lower and that's appealing to users and developers concerned about sustainability. Solana also constantly improves its technology to enhance security, scalability and performance. Now, Solana does have a great section here, which is called solutions, where you can learn about all of its tools and use cases. And this is really helpful. So to summarize, Solana's popularity is driven by its speed, low fees, scalability, and developer-friendly ecosystem. Now, trust me, Solana does have a rapidly growing ecosystem of dApps, so decentralized apps, including DeFi platforms, NFT marketplaces, blockchain games, and Web3 apps. It's very developer friendly tools and fast growing community attract developers looking to build high performance dApps. And whenever you're looking at these type of Web3 projects, you always want to make sure that developers are attracted to it and that they're developing on it. And the blazing fast transaction speeds and the low transaction fees certainly does help. Now, I've mentioned that Solana uses a unique consensus mechanism called proof of history, and it's actually combined with proof of stake. So proof of history creates a historical record of events to ensure the transactions are processed efficiently. This allows Solana to scale without needing side chains or layer two solutions. Now, something I want to do because people have always said, oh, Solana is the Ethereum killer, right? Let's take a look at what Solana and and Ethereum look like if we compare the two charts, if we take a look at the year chart or the month chart or the seven day chart, you can see that they follow each other quite closely. 
However, if we take a look at the one year chart, you'll actually notice that Solana investors, if they invested exactly a year ago, are actually making a much larger percentage return. They are sitting at 113% return versus Ethereum holders, if they invested a year ago, they're only netting 58.62% return. That being said, though, they dropped so much during the whole FTX debacle. If you're not familiar with what happened, the FTX Solana drama stems from FTX and Alameda Research being early and significant backers of Solana. They were heavily promoting its ecosystem and holding large amounts of Sol tokens. When FTX collapsed in November of 2022, fears of liquidation of these tokens caused a sharp drop in Solana's price, and the close ties between Solana and FTX raised serious concerns about Solana's reliance on the now defunct exchange. Also, many Solana-based projects that received support from FTX faced uncertainty. Despite the fallout, Solana has worked to rebuild its reputation and ecosystem, showing resilience by attracting developers and fostering community-driven recovery. So looking back, look at how far it had fallen. In November of 2021, it was sitting at around $250. And then in just a couple of months, it sank all the way down to 10 bucks. And a lot of people thought this project is probably dead. When I saw it around these levels, I went in hard, but again, I had a life expense and I had to pull it out, unfortunately. This has been painful to watch how much Solana has been flying as of late. Now, I champion crypto, so even though I messed out on Solana, I'm very, very happy for those that have made money on Solana. I do still have a little bit in my wallet, but it's a negligible amount. I can't even say that I'm an investor in Solana. And at these levels, I don't know if I'm comfortable investing just yet. I am watching this project very closely. And if Solana experiences a massive price dip, I might just scoop it up to diversify my portfolio. Now, I plan to make a detailed video pointing out the similarities and differences between Ethereum and Solana and also discuss the bullish and the bearish scenario for both of those. So if you're interested in that, mention it in the comment section and I will add it to the videos that I plan to make in the near future. Oh, and before I wrap up this video, I do want to mention definitely in the solution section, read up on the wallets aspect of what Solana does because they're becoming quite popular due to their advantageous offerings like low cost transactions, user friendly interfaces, seamless integration with the Solana ecosystem, including staking, DeFi and NFTs. And they do have pretty strong security and growing developer support. So it really does make them a go to choice for a lot of Solana users. And they've experienced a lot of growth due to the wallet aspect of what they do. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, stay tuned because a lot more crypto content is dropping on this channel soon. I appreciate you guys for watching this video in its entirety, and hopefully I will see some of you in the next video.